As promised, I'm here today with the Electric XP Trike. This uh, bike does not have mechanical gears, so unless you are pedaling really, really fast, you're going to run out of pedal and you'll be ghost pedaling. All right, so one thing that I can tell you, and uh, th like I said, this is my mother's bike and she's not real stable on this thing and i'll tell you why the biggest thing i've found so far just on this short ride and it's an awkward feeling because you almost feel like you're going to flip the bike over hello everybody i'm here today with the electric xp trike i was able to get my hands on one finally i've been trying for weeks and weeks and finally got my hands on one. Uh, this is not mine. <clears throat> it was not provided by Electric. Um, this uh, actually uh, is owned by my mother. <laughs> and I came to her house today to try it out. And um, just taking a quick look at it, and it's pretty sharp. You can see the color of it. It's kind of a metallic gray pretty nice looking color um, a nice big headlight on it and I think this one came with the comfort package which included well not the uh, comfort package actually it came with the um, I forget what they call it the hauling package um, of course you've got your back basket but this one also came with the front basket which they haven't put on yet um, but it looks very similar to the regular electrics. Um, it's got a nice step through design. It's got a battery here on the outside. The motor is a hub motor, but it's inside the bike. And then it's got chain drives that drive the axle and actually has both back wheels that pull. And it's got some kind of a spider gear so that it makes it a lot easier to turn. The, the wheels will turn at different speeds when you go around a curve so that you don't skid your tires whenever you're turning. Uh, this one does have a, a shock suspension on it. Uh, they come stock with um, hydraulic brakes. Pretty nice. I've ridden it around a little bit here in the driveway and they are nice and tight um, really like that um, it's got the smaller tires I think these are the three inch tires and they have their little reflectors on them um, let's see what we have up here there's no mechanical gears they just have the brake handles you can see my mother left uh, this plastic on here they had it outside and didn't want to let any moisture get on it but um just like all the other electric bikes you've got your power button here push and hold and it comes on if you can see it with that plastic and then it's got your up button and your down button you can go up in uh, pedal assist and down in pedal assist it's on zero right now if i hit the up button It'll go to one, two, three, all the way up to five. And five would be the highest power pedal assist. It also has a throttle, little half twist throttle. And uh, if you push it, you can see it takes right off. One thing I have noticed about this bike is the power, um, starts off very gradually on the electric bikes whenever the power starts it kicks right in and it kind of jolts you the power on this bike starts so gradually um, that you can barely even feel it kicking in with with you uh, which is really nice especially for first-time riders so that it doesn't take you by surprise um, like I said a minute ago it's got a nice big front light but it also has tail lights we've got one on each fender and then one right in the center 
and they operate as brake lights. Let me see if I can see if I can get you to see. It's kind of daylight, so I don't know if it'll show up. If you can see the that. Also, if you push and hold the top button, just like most of the electric bikes, you'll see the little, uh, the little, uh, if I can get to, there you go. Yeah, right here. You can see it shows you that the headlight's on. If I can get the right angle. There we go. Shows you that the light's on. Hard to tell in the daylight, but it's pretty bright. It's got a reflector there. And then the back lights, actually the two fender lights come on as well as that middle third light. Now the middle third light doesn't act as a brake, but the uh, ones on the fenders do. Um, let's see, what else? course the handlebars I think they're up that's as high as they go you can also release the release uh, button right here they'll go down that far and the seat of course it's up fairly high you can bring it up even higher or you can slide it down to uh, to to fit uh, most people most heights um, and then the nice step through like I said batteries on the back um, you don't have to have the key in this battery for it to operate Unlike all the other electric bikes as you can see there's no key in it right now But it's still on So you don't have to have the battery or the key in for the bike to work now if you leave leave it like this for What's the thing say 48 hours? You can see that. I don't know if it comes up very good. But after 48 hours, um, if you try to turn it on, it won't turn on. What you have to do is wake the battery back up by pushing this button right here. And that shows you how much battery life you actually have left. And it's down one bar there, but uh, we, like I said, we were riding it around a little bit today already. Uh, it's got the uh, the white walls that are actually reflective, along with the reflectors in the tires, which is really nice. And it does fold in half right here. Pull that out, and the front wheel will fold over to the side. Uh, doesn't make a huge difference about fitting it in the car um, but it would make a difference whenever you go to store it in a garage or a building it would take up a lot less space the back doesn't fold anything so that width you know is still going to be that width <clears throat> so pretty good looking bike so what I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to uh, strap up here and take this thing out for a little ride and see how we like it. Be back with you in just a minute. Okay everybody I'm back on the bike and we'll see how it goes. Nice thing is you can sit on this bike without having your feet on the ground to get all situated. <laughs> okay so we've got the brakes here um you know because this bike does not have kickstands if you uh get off of it and leave it and if you're on an angle of course the bike's going to roll but each one of the brake levers actually has a lever that you push and it locks it in and then you pull it and it unlocks so that'll keep it rolling all right, so we're going to take off. I've got it in pedal assist one. I'm going to go ahead and just hit the uh, 
go ahead and hit the um, the throttle and this bike takes off a lot slower uh, than the regular electrics most of you that might have electric or any other bike for that matter whenever you give it throttle boy they really take off and for a first time rider it can be a little bit unnerving but with this one I'm going to give it gas you can see how slow it takes off I mean it takes off super slow this is just pedal assist one just using the throttle and I'm just now hearing the motor catch kick in a little bit and I'm up to about five miles an hour so um, so yeah five miles an hour on pedal assist one so they've really knocked the speed down on this a good bit hey <laughs> oh boy I'm going to uh, hop up on this rail trail but I'm going to go ahead and knock the pedal assist up to five and pedal I've got a little bit of a vibration in the back uh, in the back fender hopefully that won't be too annoying I may get off and see if I can figure out what the deal is so with pedal assist five pedaling you can only get up to about 11 miles an hour there's something you don't see every day <laughs> that guy's set up for some deep water four-wheeling here in West Virginia they allow you to ride those around we have a lot of trails for off-road vehicles um, ATVs side-by-sides are called the Hatfield and, Hatfield and McCoy's trails and uh, a lot of the people that come into the state come in to ride those uh, ATV trails so let me stop and let that car now one thing about this like I said it takes off kind of slow so if you're in a hurry to get going in front of a car uh, you got to be aware that this bike does not pick up very fast so um, I'll tell you what I'm gonna stop and see if I can do something with that vibration all right I don't know if that did anything or not it does have one loose screw on the fender it might, sounds like that might have done it. I could only get it finger tight. Like I said, I'm going to wait on these cars since this thing doesn't have very fast pickup. Okay, now we'll be uninterrupted for a little bit. So I'm in pedal assist five. You do run out of pedal. This uh, bike does not have mechanical gears. So unless you are pedaling really, really fast, you're gonna run out of pedal and you'll be ghost pedaling. So about 12.9, 13 miles an hour is going to be about top speed on this thing. On pedal assist 5. But honestly, whenever I'm out riding, I don't go much more than 10. All right, so one thing that I can tell you, and uh, th like I said, this is my mother's bike. And she hasn't biked since she was a younger girl. And she's not real stable on this thing, and I'll tell you why. 
The biggest thing I've found so far just on this short ride, the littlest lean, because you have those two wheels, it's going to make your bike lean. With a two-wheel bike, all you do is lean the other way and you feel straight up. But with this bike, you're going to stay leaning the way the road is leaning. So you kind of have to lean the other way while you ride on it, which is a little bit different. Like right here, I'm leaning to the right because it's angled to the right. So I kind of have to sit on the left side, left portion of this bike. And it's an awkward feeling because you almost feel like you're going to flip the bike over. But no matter how hard I try to flip the bike over with my 290 pounds, I can't get it to, it won't flip. So, I mean, it's sturdy. You just have to trust that the bike is going to stay upright. Um, let's see. I tell you what. Pedal Assist 3 is about the most comfortable, I think, to ride with. It's enough that you still have to feel a little bit of pedal resistance. And honestly, you're going about 10 miles an hour when you top out it on that 3. Uh, let's continue on. But yeah, the biggest thing is you're going to have to lean the way the road is leaning. So this trail is leaning slightly to the right. So the back two wheels are going to lean with it. And no matter how much you lean, the bike is going to stay leaning to the right. And you just kind of have to slide a little bit left on your seat to feel like you're upright, if you can understand what I'm trying to say. Now right here, when you come to a crease or something in the road, you've got to hit it straight. If you hit it at an angle, one of your back wheels will hit it first and it'll make you feel like you're going to tip. And if that difference is too much, it just might flip you. So you want to hit any crack or bump straight on, parallel, or, uh, perpendicular to that line. Hmm. i got some roots that are pushing that up a little bit. All right, let me continue on. And again, like I said, this bike was not given to me. I haven't been paid for this, this uh, review of this bike. So I'm telling you the 100% truth of how I feel and how my mother feels. Now, I'm in my mid-50s. I'm not going to reveal my mother's age, but, you know, you can do a little bit of math. And she's, you know, up toward the top of her age range when it comes to bike riding, I would say. And I've only been able to get her to ride this bike out to the end of her driveway and back two or three times and that's because there's a couple parts in it that lean a little bit and it's because that bike is leaning she feels very uncomfortable on it but again that's something that you just have to power through and trust that the bike isn't going to flip on you I showed you back there shaking it pulling to side to side as hard as I can and I can't get it to flip, so. So we'll continue on and see if I run into anything else. How you doing? So, uh. Let's see, where do I want to go now? I don't think I'm going to go any farther out the trail. I think what I might do is go up toward school here. 
Okay, I don't see any cars behind me. So this is a pretty decent incline here. See, I'm going uh, 11.5. If you remember, I topped out pretty much at, what, 12 or 13 miles an hour. And I am pedaling. And it's taking me up this road about 10 miles an hour. Not too bad considering I'm 290 pounds now if you're 90 pounds less than me you're going to get a lot better result because uh, with battery operated equipment of any kind the lighter you are the better power it has now we're going to come out here toward the high school. You got some soccer games going on down there. Pretty nice day today. We had some storms yesterday and I was kind of worried that I wouldn't be able to get out and try out this trike. So this thing, if you push the power button, I'll look at that real quick. We've got a trip. We've got the volts on the battery. We've got how much current we're drawing. Up this way. Uh, we've got how much time you've been on your ride. I've been out 15 minutes so far. And then you've got your total miles. There's only seven miles on this bike. And I've got 1.7 miles of those seven miles. <laughs> All right, so give you a little look at how the bike looks while riding it. Whoa, we're going around the curve here. Hmm. So here we go around the curve, you kind of have to lean. Like I said, uh, the bike is going to feel a little bit tippy when you're on a little bit of a slope, but you just kind of got to go with it and uh, just trust that it's not going to tip over because it is stable. So let's try a little bit of gravel riding. See what happens. Oh. Okay, so the uh, <laughs> you can hear that clanging. That is the uh, the fenders. And the screws are a little bit loose in the fenders, so they need they need to tighten those up a bit. <laughs> okay, this thing is not made for off-roading. So, I'd say if you're going to buy one of these bikes, you're probably going to want to have bike trails that are paved. 
or roads, you definitely want pavement because rocks are a little bit rough. It's a little bit too uneven. Let me see if you can see how this thing tips going around this curve. And you kind of have to lean with it a bit here. You got to lean. Otherwise, you feel like you're going to tip over. So my overall impression here is it takes a little getting used to. Um, don't think you're just going to jump on this trike and, and take off. Um, there's a little bit of a learning curve. Uh, if, you're, if you haven't ridden a bike in a long time, um, it'll take some time to get used to. Uh, and that's only because of the way the two wheels on the back makes it lean. And it definitely leans with the angle of whatever the surface you're riding on has. Um, you know, on a bike, if you're on a angled road, the bike is always going to stay upright. But on this, you're caught to the same angle as the road. So you've just got to slide on your seat a little bit, stay right. And just realize that the thing's not going to tip over with you. Um, the only real issue I would see as far as tipping over would be if you try to go up on the side of a hill. I'd say you'd almost most definitely tip over. Oh. Yeah, these uh, <laughs> these fenders definitely need tightened up. But, um, yeah, if you go on the side of a hill, you'll definitely flip over. If you take a curve too fast, like top speed, <coughs> especially if there's a little bit of an angle, I'd say that you could probably tip it over. But if you're on most, you know, generally flat, and you're not going, you know, 12 or 13 miles an hour, it's going to be really hard to tip this thing over. So you just have you just have to just to have to have faith in this bike and know that it's going to hold you up. And I would say the lighter that you are, probably the less it would bother you. I don't know. I feel like with my weight and being up so high that you know it makes me a little bit more top heavy and i'm about six feet tall too so that gives me a little bit more height you know sitting height so uh I probably would not ride this bike on some of the gravel road, uh, trails that uh, Lisa and I generally ride on. Like I said, I would keep it more on the paved roads. One good thing about this bike for sure, when you come to an intersection like this with all these cars, when you stop you don't have to put your foot down on the ground. And that's one of that was one of my big pet peeves with most electric bikes. They're so high off the ground, and with their uh, the way the pedals are set up, you have to really raise your seat height. So it makes it really hard unless you jump off of the seat to touch the ground, which is a little annoying. But with this bike. You can just sit here with your feet on the pedals and wait for the cars to go. So in the middle of this uh, 
it's kind of raised in the middle kind of down on each side and you can definitely tell the bike angles with the angle of the road you also have to make sure that your uh, your side tire doesn't drop off you have to remember that it's a good I don't know foot a foot and a half wider than your front tire so it's about at least as wide as your it's about as wide as the handlebars I guess maybe a little wider okay so we're back now final thoughts on the bike I like it <laughs> do I like it more than a two-wheel bike uh, for me and what I do with my bikes, um, I probably would not get the trike. Um, for people that like a little less speed, a little, uh, less maneuverability, um, somebody that's going to be mostly on paved roads, even roads, <laughs> um, this would be great. The back basket with the front basket put on would be a great bike to run down to the corner store for some groceries or whatever you need or just tooling around the city a little bit. Um, you definitely don't want to go off-road or in too much gravel, unlevel roads with it. Um, the biggest thing that you need to uh, be aware of is when you first start riding these things, you've got to know that these back tires, because it has two back tires, you're not going to sit upright on an uneven ground. If the ground is tilted to the right, the bike is going to tilt with it. And your bike stem will be up sideways, so you've got to lean left. If it's leaning to the left, you got to lean right. And you've got to sort of fight it just a little bit with the handlebars. <clears throat> and you're not going to sit up straight up and down all the time. You are going to be, you are going to feel like you're leaning sometimes. And that's something that you just got to get over. Um, but as long as you're on flat ground, should be no problems whatsoever. Um, plenty of lights to be seen. Um, this does have a 500 watt motor like most of the uh, electric bikes do. Let me see here. Uh, 48 volt, 500 watt. And the battery, I'm not real sure. I'll have to uh, add that. I'll take the battery off and look and see what the battery uh, is and then I'll have to uh, put that in writing here on the screen for you but overall nice bike put together really well and for people that are don't like a two two wheel bike or you know don't feel stable enough on a two wheel bike you know this would be a good uh, option so I hope you like this review of the electric XP trike and uh, stay tuned. I've got another trail ride coming soon. And uh, we'll see you next time. I hope you enjoy your day. God bless, and we'll see you on the next video.